Hello, let's learn about how Monopoly makes choices and their production choices and uh, what their demand curve looks like and what it would look like on a graph. So uh, here I've got a situation where there's uh, a firm with a geographic monopoly. We're going to call it the coffee place. So the coffee place is the only seller of cappuccinos in this town. Uh, this is the market demand for those cappuccinos. We're going to fill in the missing spaces in the table. So quantity, Q is for quantity, it's how many. P is price, it's uh, the price we're selling it for. Total revenue uh, is quantity times price. So it's how many I sold times the price I sold them for. Average revenue, so anytime we see average, uh, we're going to put total revenue divided by um, the quantity, right? So it's always divided by the quantity. And then finally, marginal revenue is the change in total revenue over the change in quantity. In this case, we're just going uh, up one. So it's always going to be, the denominator is always going to be a one. Okay, so here we go. So here's the uh, the price. So if the, if the price is 450, they're not going to sell any, so they're not going to make any total revenue. If the price is, is four dollars, they're going to sell one. Four times one is four. If the price goes down to three fifty, they're going to sell two. So this is seven. If the price is at three dollars, they're going to sell three units. That's nine. I'm just going to do the rest of the math here. Uh, ten and ten, and then back to nine. Okay. The average revenue is total revenue divided by the quantity. So it's four divided by one, which is four. Uh, Seven dollars divided by two is three fifty. Nine dollars divided by three is three, and you're starting to get the idea here that the average revenue is going to be the price, and that really should make sense um, because the revenue that the firm brings in. Uh, where did I get this? Well, I got it from multiplying quantity times price, right? So if I wanted to know what the average revenue is. This is total revenue over quantity. So if I multiply quantity by both sides, then this is going to go away. And I'm going to get average revenue times quantity. That is to equal total revenue. This must be the price. Okay. So this turns into price. All right. Finally, marginal revenue. And uh, hopefully you've, you've learned this now is that uh, any firm, whether it's perfectly competitive, is going to produce up until the marginal revenue equals that marginal cost. Okay, so in this case, um, the additional total revenue of that first unit is four. The additional total revenue of that second unit is three. Okay, so that second one, uh, the marginal revenue went down. The third one is two. The next one is one. This is zero. There's no change. And this is negative one. Okay, so what we're seeing here is the marginal revenue is declining, and the reason it's declining is in order to sell more units, I have to lower the price. Okay, because I have a downward sloping demand curve. You know, we've we've seen this uh, before in another graph, right? In the, in the more competitive markets, you face this downward sloping demand curve. So in order to increase the quantity. I also have to decrease the price, right? So this is true for the monopolist. It's not really true for the perfect competitor because they have that perfectly elastic uh, demand curve. So let's go back to this. Okay, and uh, here the answers are already filled in. So we've went through this, and so one thing to note here is that the marginal revenue is below the price. Okay, so it starts out the same as the price, but then it's going to go down below that. So the marginal revenue curve, when we graph, it's going to be inside of the demand curve. That's a rule that's always there. So here we're going to graph it here. So first is the demand curve. This is quantity and price. We've done these before at the beginning of class. But for a monopolist, uh, their m marginal revenue is below the uh, demand curve, right? So the monopolist is the single seller, right? And so if the marginal cost, let's say the marginal cost was uh, $2 per uh, cappuccino. Okay, so there was a marginal cost right here. Okay, two dollars each. Remember what the, the profit maximization says. I'm going to produce up until uh, marginal cost equals marginal revenue. So if that's true, I'm going to come over here uh, and I'm going to produce three units because that's where 
uh, it equals two dollars. Now, I'm a monopolist, so this means I don't have to. Uh, I could charge the customers two dollars, but I can charge them a higher price. I can charge them what they're willing to pay, which is their demand, right? So I'm going to produce three units, but then I'll follow this up to the demand curve, and I'm going to charge three dollars per uh, cup of coffee. Okay, so the consumer is going to pay it because at uh, three, at the quantity three, their their willingness to pay or their reservation price is three dollars. Okay, so that's how to do uh, that's how to do that. Okay, so there's an output effect. Uh, if I increase um, quantity, I may increase revenue, uh, but the lower price also in reduces my revenue. Okay, so we've seen that before. Okay. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing as what I said, but remember, uh, remember this rule. It does hold true for really anything you're doing, but uh, it holds true for perfect competitors and for uh, monopolies. Okay, so uh, this is this is how to do it. So you just go to profit maximization, draw the curves or, or read the graph, and then uh, we, this is how much we're going to produce, but we follow it up to the demand curve. So let me draw a generic one just so you have one for your notes. Um, these show up quite a bit. Okay, so use uh, black here. So we got price, we've got quantity, and for demand, let's go ahead and do a straight one here. All right, so I get the demand curve here, and here I'm at. Okay, now the marginal revenue curve is going to be inside of the demand curve. It's actually the partial derivative of uh, the demand function in a calculus-based class. You know, you'll have to work that out. Um, here in this class, you'll you'll be given, uh, you'll you'll be able to figure it out. Okay, so this is marginal revenue. Okay, now let's say this is a uh, an increasing cost uh, monopoly, right? So the product um, could be, you know, Mexican food. I'm the only the seller, but the more I sell, the more my costs are going to go up. So we'll we'll draw this sort of classical. Uh, marginal cost, right? So I find profit maximization. Where does marginal cost equal marginal revenue? It's right here. Okay, so we'll call this Q profit maximization. Now I could be a nice person and charge this price, uh, but I'm a monopolist and I'm in here to make money, so I'm going to charge the price where it hits the demand. Okay, so the price. Monopoly price, if I could do that a little straighter there. The monopoly price uh, at profit maximization, or actually let me let me say P monopoly. Okay, the monopoly price is going to be this higher price that's up here where it hits the demand curve. Okay. And a couple things you should note uh, if you look at this. Uh, first, this doesn't say how much profit they're going to make. So for that I would have to do um, I'd have to do an average total cost curve. So let's just do a Generic one here. Okay, so there's my average total cost, and so if I want to figure out um, how much how much of a profit the firm should make, what I do is follow. Do that again there. What I do is follow this. This is uh, average total cost, and I follow this up to where the the. the Price is for the monopoly. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this purple thing. Okay. So this purple is gonna be total revenue. Okay. Total revenue is price times monopoly quantity, right? So that would give me, um, I guess we'll do that. We'll call this total revenue. Okay. Price times quantity. I got that from multiplying this times this. And then this orange go suns. This orange box is where it hits the average total cost down to here. So this is going to be whatever this cost is time or the average cost of producing those units times the um, the quantity and this will give me total cost. So it's the average total cost at Monopoly times the quantity. Okay, and then I'm going to take whatever the difference is, and this is going to give me profit. You often use profit symbol as pi, right? So it's total revenue minus total cost. So it's the area of uh, this big purple minus the area of 
uh, the orange. Okay, there's a different way of doing that. Let me back up a little bit. I could show you that one too. Okay, so for the different one, we just recognize that uh, when we say, hey, this is the average total cost, this is the price they're going to sell, this is how many they're going to sell too. So you could, whoops, you could also just take wherever the price is, and then this is your profit. Okay, so it's the distance between price and average total cost, and then multiplied by how many uh, units we've sold, right? So this is the per unit profit times the number I sold. Okay, now that is if I'm making a profit. Let's say I'm not. Okay, I'm just gonna have to erase this. If I'm not making a profit, it's exciting stuff there. Okay, so if I'm not making a profit, let's put the Average total cost curve, uh, we'll say, let's say it's up here. Okay, so now this is the revenue, and then to produce that many units, this is the cost. So this is the loss, right? So the distance between average total cost and the monopolist's price times the quantity will get me whatever I've lost, okay? So that's the sort of the generic form of this when the monopoly or when the mark, when the marginal cost is increasing. Sorry about that. And uh, so we'll go back to this, okay? Another thing to notice, uh, monopolists are gonna cut back, right? So if this was a competitive market, the firm would produce out to here, right? Where marginal cost equals demand, which is the same as marginal benefit. Okay, so they would be producing all the way out here, but they're not. Okay, so this is not a um, uh, this is not a competitive market. Okay, and so we're going to produce to here. This is the price again. This is the quantity that the monopoly is going to produce, and so we're losing out on some space here. We're losing out on this. This is known as the deadweight loss. Okay, so. When we have that loss in the market, okay, um, we lose out. Okay, so this is the same version of the earlier thing. We're going to have this deadweight loss, right? And so the way to calculate that deadweight loss, just like the other deadweight losses that we've done, is one half base times height. Okay, so it would be uh, the distance between p and marginal cost would be one. Uh, unit there and the distance between QM and QC which is quantity at monopoly quantity at uh, uh, competitive uh, and then we it's a triangle so we multiply that by half and that's how we get that okay all right so let's do a couple well let's do one example and then I'll do another video on, on what's going on there okay so in this case this has some numbers so the, the monopoly quantity where marginal cost equals marginal revenue happens at 100 okay so we see that right here we follow this up to where we're going to charge the price we're going to charge a price of 60 so this is prop this is uh, price of monopoly and then the average total cost curve hits at uh, quantity 100 or at this point f right here and that's going to be 20 so the per unit profit is 40 so I'm going to multiply so if I want to figure out the profit I'm going to multiply 40 so it's here, times 100, okay, and I'm going to get $4,000 is the, is the total profit, okay, and for this monopolist. Now there is a deadweight loss, okay, so if this was a competitive market, we would be out here, and in order to calculate the deadweight loss, we just find out what, what this is from here to here, and from here to here, and we get this deadweight loss, okay? So that's monopoly graphical analysis and thinking about monopolies.